How about this? Sense information, which is really what I'm talking about. Well, by information, I mean the operations of your individual brain. The full nervous system, but to make it a little more apparently specific, your thinking part of the nervous system, the part, your molecules that talk, whether out loud or to yourself. Information is simply, another description, it sounds like a more of a noun pointing than it does me trying to continually get you to think of this non-ending process. Because the feeling is it's not simply a process, the feeling is that it's a you in there doing this rather than that doing this giving the fleeting Im giving the impression that there is a you it's another another story but what I wanted to point out was that even information if we're going to call it that knowledge is matter it is material and those of you that do recall the classical era of physics. God, how I miss it. <laughs> I don't know what I miss that or the 40s the most, but anyway. <laughs> it's remembering the phases of matter. Everybody remembers that. Solid, gas, and liquid. All right, let me tell you something. <laughs> Of course, I've already told you something that's not even common knowledge, whether you know it or not. That knowledge itself is material. It is matter. But now, I'm here to tell you this. I'm going to tell you about the phase of knowledge. Ordinary knowledge is liquid. And I'm going to tell you why, because one of the... I guess I might be pushing it to call it a definition... But one of the valid descriptions of the liquid phase of matter is this, that it takes the shape of its container. <laughs> that is an operational description of the liquid state of matter. Do you see, some of you have already laughed and tripped a uh, step ahead of me, you believe, but do you see that ordinary knowledge literally to apply the laws of physics, the states of matter, I'm here to tell you, is liquid because all ordinary knowledge takes on the shape of the container. It takes on the shape of your brain. It takes on the shape of your intelligence. Look at it, either description you'd like. Can any of you see any connection between that and a little something I pulled out a night or so ago. That there is no thought, there is no observation that will adequately, fully reveal or encompass what I was calling, and I'll do it again, a totality of reality, a more complex reality. Without that thought, without that observation, taking into account a part of the thought or a part of the observation being the thinker, the observer, him or herself. That is, you cannot separate what in the city, what life makes the intellect at the old level say, all right, there's people and then there's knowledge. We all know that. They're thinkers and they're, they're their thoughts. And you've got to separate the two. You've got to take into account even the source of the thought. But they don't. They say that, but they do it just the opposite. <laughs> Ordinary intelligence cannot have a thought and say, all right, that's a pretty good thought. But now, wait a minute. i got to take me, if I'm going to call this thought a principle or an equation, a theory, I have got to be part of that theory. I am the container of it. And ordinary knowledge takes on the shape of its container. That is why... There has been throughout history, on a small level, not enough to disturb life in the city, but there has been a small string of men that life made think and say such things as this, that something is amiss in the intellectual life of men because there is no such thing as 
truly objective knowledge <laughs> because I can have a perfectly splendid, <coughs> obvious idea and I can turn around and tell somebody next to me, <coughs> tell my family, and they go, yeah, I know just what you mean, and they'll make a comment, and I'll think, Jesus, I ain't, what do you mean that's just what I meant? 